Hey, it's Joel. Look, this is the Anycubic Mega X, or as Sean likes to call it, the, the Mega Man X. It's appropriate. It is a large format 3D printer priced competitively with some interesting features. The owls that you see on there aren't the end of this story, and we printed as hard as we can. And you're gonna wanna see this, and you will, right here on 3D Printing Nerd. There you are, welcome back. The Anycubic Mega X is a capable and functionally cool machine. Uh, before I tell you about how we got it out of its box, I wanna go over some of the stats. And I've got my laptop here just because I'm old and I forget things. This is a 3D printer, of course, you know that. It's got printing material support for PLA, ABS, TPU, hips, and wood. Print speed, it'll go 20 millimeters per second to 100 millimeters per second. Comes to fault with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and it's 300 on the X, 300 on the Y, and 305 on the Z or Z. The nozzle will go to 250C, the bed will go to 100C. In order to use any machine that's shipped to you, you do have to get it out of the box, and we filmed the entire process, but, here are some highlights. One of the things I do wanna mention while you look at this unboxing footage is you'll see the light in the back go from not very blue, but to very blue. And that's because we filmed this as the sun was setting and the sun comes into our background, which means that the blue LED that we use to illuminate the light, it's not as strong. And so early on, it's not as blue, but towards the end, it's blue and it's beautiful. The packaging that this machine came in was absolutely wonderful. There was a ton of foam to support all of the individual parts and the printer was not damaged in any way. It came out fresh and new as it should. Neat. Unboxing is fun and sometimes the foam becomes a sport utensil. It's like a Frisbee. Any machine comes with spare parts and this one came with a secondary hot end, extra tools, a filament runout sensor, a piece of metal, a bigger piece of metal, USB cable, SD card, a needle that will inject PLA straight into your veins, a pancake flipper, and apparently some nuts. These are nuts. I'm an English native speaker, and a lot of times these machines are produced in countries that aren't native English speaking countries. And so instructions that they include have some non-English words on them. Lucky for me, Google Translate is there to help. Shenzhen Zongwei Cube Technology Company Limited. There is a switch on the power supply that lets you choose between 110 or 220 voltage. If you're in a country that has 110 and it's accidentally set to 220, nothing bad will happen. If the reverse is, is there, you'll be really sad if you plug it in. Thankfully for me, we're in a 110 volt country and Sean was there to help me out. I think it's on 220. It is. The paper taped to the bed isn't there just to protect it. It also offers a functionality. The machine comes with Anycubic's Ultra Base. It's a bed material that behaves in a way such as this. If you print on it while it's hot, the pores are open. And then as it cools down, the pores close, which then squeeze the part up and away. So when this cools down, the part just pops off the build plate. That's what I experienced and luckily this is legit. My mom always says I was born with a big head and thankfully I put it to use. <laughs> Do you need me to help? No. The spool holder here off to the side is at a curious angle and it works as it's advertised but uh, I would like something slightly different in that I think that it could be made in a way to support larger rolls such as five kilogram rolls or rolls that have a smaller inner diameter hole, such as Tolman 3D spools. When it was originally packed, this Bowden tube was shoved up under here and kind of squished. I was a little worried at first, and then I got to undo it as I was lowering the x-axis, and it actually turned out quite okay. And with that, the first print was off and running, and I was excited to see what it looked like, and this is what it looks like, this right here. This is a pair of owls. Oh, they're kissing. Oops. This is a pair of owls, and this was the first print that the machine produced. I think that the owls themselves look pretty decent. I'm gonna be honest, but there's a slight issue with this print, and I'm gonna see if you can identify it in three, two, one. It's a stringing issue. 
I bet you got that. There was some slight stringing with this PLA that was being used. I did notice that the uh, the temperature was a little bit low, and so it wasn't an oozing problem. Um, I think it was just a retraction problem. That's, that's my guess. But really, I mean, these turned out okay, and I was excited to get to printing. And did I get to printing? I printed a lot of stuff. Oh, wait, is that it? No, no. I printed more stuff. After, oh, first of all, oh, look at this. Look at this. I love you, Mom. That must have been one of the kids got this for mommy. So I'm gonna save this bag. Be right back. I spent oodles of time printing with this machine, printing with all different sorts of slicers, a lot of gray filament, just trying to get it, oh, oh, so dialed in. Because remember, we started, we started with these owls and we ended up with, here, how about this? That's pretty decent, right? Can you see that? Yeah. That's looks, not bad, right? Looks great. That is not bad. So we ended up with something pretty good and we ended up with, hey, it's the same thing. Look at that. So not only did we try different models, we tried different slicers with the same model. And don't worry, we'll go over this. But there's a few things from this pile that I need to organize and highlight and uh, the rest of it can just go away. Let's see. I went through and tested various PLA materials and the goal was to see really what sort of prints that this machine could kick off. And we ended up with that, these, these, and those. And it makes me excited for what this machine has to offer, but stick with me. Uh, well, we'll get there eventually. One of the things I do want to highlight is, uh, that's one of uh, Chuck Hellebuck's uh, pawns. Part of it. Part of it, it broke. Well, this, uh, this is a fun story. Uh, years and years ago, I, uh, I tested this filament from a company called Orb Polymer. And we can exhume the filament from its case. There we go. Oops. They disappeared. And it could be because their filament wasn't that good. It, uh, it just kind of comes apart. I want you to take a look at that. And Sean, one of the things I want to see, do you see that stair stepping? Yeah, I sure do. You do? Yeah. Okay. Look at it, look at it go. Look at it. No, no, look at it go. Look at it go. I was running into this issue with this machine and I thought, oh no, what's going on? In order to explain what's going on here and the fix for it, we have to kind of dive into a 3DP 101 sort of territory. So this machine, what's really interesting about it is it's got two end stops. So sometimes when you have two lead screw motors, uh, they can get out of sync and you'll get a lead screw that sinks on either side. This one has two end stops. So when it homes, it's homing both Z towers, which means that you're going to have a perfectly uh, parallel or level X axis, which is great. In order for the X axis to, to go up, each of the motors on Z turn the lead screw and the trapezoidal nuts are there and it makes the lead screw, or it makes, <laughs> makes the X axis go up or down. And a lead screw may not always be completely and totally straight. And if it has a slight wobble in it, then the X axis is going to feel that and do slight shifts. No, no, what are you doing? No, no, don't go down. This one shimmies. I got shimmy, shimmy. All right. That's what was happening right here because, because it's got to go up. And if that screw is bent slightly, then it's going to create kind of a stair step effect as the lead screw rotates one revolution. So the fix for that and what I did is you loosen the screws holding the trapezoidal nut in place. That's it. That took care of it. So with that out of the way, I began to print a whole bunch of mini joels and a whole bunch of benchies. And we got some excellent prints out of this machine and we got them in some various filaments. And I think they look really good. The ones that I really want to show you over here, but before I do that, let's just bring these back. Let's just bring these back. Okay, first, uh, this cube is gorgeous. Can you see that? Yeah. It's a gorgeous cube. Look at it. I think it looks fantastic. Do you agree? I agree. That is a great cube. And it was one of the prints that I got off this machine where I was just flabbergasted. This is Atomic's blue PLA. It is like, uh, I forget the name of the blue, but it's a gorgeous blue. And I did a mini Joel and I did a Benchy and it came out 
It came out great and the printer did a fantastic job. I did this, the, the Floalistic fabric. It's ultra base. It should hold on to it really well until it doesn't need to. And when this prints, it's super duper tiny and it doesn't have a lot of uh, contact area with the build plate. So for this to succeed and print as well as it did, uh, I think is a testament to what this machine can do. I mean, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, right? I don't know, it did, it did a really, really good job. Uh, while I was away on a trip, I had Sean print something and he printed Elsa and he used some default settings that weren't highly optimized, but I still think Elsa came out pretty good. Here's the thing, if you give that to a small child who really wants an Elsa bust in her room, or a small child that wants an Elsa bust in his room, sure. they would like it, right? Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think so. This is the chomper from, uh, I think this is Clock Spring, right? This is a, it doesn't get annoying at all, but this is a model that uh, was put out around Halloween, I believe. And I bought it, it was like $2.99, and I was gonna print it one day, and it works. The, the ultra base hold on to it and it, the bottom layers, well, they look good, look at those. I mean, what's the purpose of a machine anyway? It's to make things that you want. And all of these things, I think, I think, I think it did a good job with, right? This is great. Th this is a, a, I forget the name of the model, but I think it did a good job with it. Look at that stairs. Those are awesome stairs. Look at the patterns. Look at the patterns of the brick and I think it's good. I think it's good. Here, look at this. Can you can you zoom in on that? Because I want you to I want you to take a good hard look. I mean, fairly identical, right? For uh, the most part. For the most part, yeah, I'd say so. For the most part, one of these was printed in Cura at 30 millimeters per second at 0.1 millimeter layers. The other one was printed in Simplify 3D at 60 millimeters per second at 0.2 millimeter layers. Can you tell a difference? I can't, which is why I had to label them. <laughs> Oh, and it says Chris, because shout out to Chris at Versus 3D. He's the one that sent over his Simplify 3D profile. Uh, here's the thing, and here's where uh, rubber hits the road, right? A 3D printer is going to be a tool. It's going to be a tool that you use to make things that you want or that other people might want. And I think the Mega X, or the Mega Man X, yes, is an incredibly capable, cost-efficient tool to make stuff. I think it does a good job with what it prints. And <laughs> at this point, through the different slicers, I tested in Prusa Slicer, I tested in an Idea Maker, I tested it in Cura, and I tested it using Simplify 3D and all produced wonderful results. In fact, I had to label my Joels or my mini Joels. Look at that. I don't want to lose the label because I'm, I'm not going to remember what it is. But here, I'll tell you what. I'm going to put them right in a row. Don't look at the label before I take it out. My goal was to utilize free slicers because usually when you purchase a machine at this price point, you're not looking to spend extra money on software to make it do what it does. While some people really love Simplify 3D, other people think that at $150, it's an added expense that you don't need because free slicers give you all the functionality. But me, I wanted to test them all. And so there are four mini Joels out here and each one looks really good. I think that, uh, I think that any of the slicers did a really good job with it and I'm, I'm just, I'm happy with it. And so one of these is Simplify 3D, 0.2 millimeter layers. One of these is Idea Maker at 0.25 millimeter layers and 50 millimeters per second. One of these is Cura at 0.1 millimeter layers and 30 millimeters per second. And the other one is Prusa Slicer at whatever the default speed was in that. It was like 50 or 55 for PLA and at 0.2 detail settings. And none of them are absolutely fine tuned perfect, but I was getting close with all of them. And Cura, 30 millimeters per second, 0.1 millimeter layers, Idea Maker, Simplify 3D, Prusa Slicer. And I think at this point, I mean, if I'm looking at them, I'm thinking they're all good enough and I would enjoy having any of these models or I would, I would take these and give them out to shows 
if we were traveling right now. One more thing, uh, I want to tell you about the machine. And it's interesting because this isn't a review, right? I, I went about this like this was the first impressions of this machine. I wanted to get a few prints off of it and I really wanted to get the hang of it. And I think I did more than I really anticipated. But look, look, look right here. This is, I think this is, this is fantastic design choices right here. The extruder is right here. The filament is loaded on the spool holder comes in through the filament sensor, it comes up into here, and that's the extruder, and then it takes it through the Bowden tube to the hot end. When it comes out of the hot end, sometimes the end of filament can have a little ball on it. And unfortunately, when you have an extruder like this that is uh, that has the filament path really, really enclosed down close to uh, the, the gear that turns, uh, it can get in the way or it can be tough to pull out. And what any cubic has done has made this little section right here removable. So as you're pulling the filament out, if for some reason the blob on the end is slightly too large and not easy to remove, you don't have to take apart the hot end. You just yank and a little piece comes out and then you, you can snip off the bad end, pull that piece out and put it back in and you're still good to go. So you haven't had to take this apart and that little piece enabled you to keep going with less downtime. That's wonderful and it's just it's just one feature but i i just it felt good it felt so good when that happened and i just loved it so this um this first impressions of the machine is really good i had a really good time printing the things i did and i had a really good time tuning it and testing it and this isn't a machine just to test this is a machine to make things to make things that are useful to make things that are fun and to make things that you want and others want and my first impression of this machine is that it's capable of doing that. The machine itself retails for $399 US, and that's the price any cubic has it on their website. There's a link in the description if you're interested. Plus, they've given me a code that takes $25 off the price for the first 200 orders. I'll put that in the description as well. You can also find this at Amazon, but the price is increased because for any cubic, or anyone really to sell through Amazon, it costs more. So they're just trying to recoup their costs. Uh, right now, if you, if you want a large machine, you enjoy printing and you like the idea of things sticking to the build plate and you don't care what slicer you use, this might be for you and you'll have to check it out. Well, that was a first look at what I think is a pretty wonderful machine. And I'm really looking forward to printing more stuff with it. Uh, if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to hear. Otherwise, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you all. And as always, high five. My suggestion is that the next one that they, the next machine they release is called the Sigma. You've got uh, Mega Man X, Zero, and the big bad for Mega Man X series is Sigma. So like, you gotta have- you Gotta have Sigma. You gotta have Sigma, man. You gotta have Sigma. You gotta, you gotta have Sigma.